In this video, we're going to talk about forgiveness and unmasking unforgiveness. But first, guys, like this video. And if you haven't subscribed as yet, please, I encourage you to do so. And don't forget to touch that bell so that you will know when new videos are available. Let's get started. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Mana for Thought. The Webster Dictionary defines forgiveness as to cease to feel resentment against an offender. You may have been hurt by the actions of someone who abused you either emotionally or physically. Growing up, you were criticized by a parent or a family member, a friend who betrayed you, or maybe a partner who had an affair who violated your trust. People have been hurt in many ways. But before I start, but before I get into forgiveness, I want to talk about what forgiveness is not. Forgiveness does not always mean reconciliation. It doesn't mean forgetting or excusing the harm done to you or making up with the person who caused the harm. Forgiveness does not make what happened to you okay because it is not. Forgiveness does not mean you stop hurting or that you should or that you should forgive or that you should forget the offense. But what does the Bible say about forgiveness? The Bible defines forgiveness as a dismissal, a release, or a pardon. In Matthew 18, Peter asked Jesus, How many times should I forgive my brother who sins against me? Seven times? And Jesus said, No, Peter, not seven times, but seven times seventy. I can just imagine Peter's reaction when Jesus said that. Say what? Seven times 70? This just shows how important forgiveness is to Jesus. When someone hurts you, you can hold on to the negative thoughts or embrace forgiveness and move forward. Sometimes we say we forgive when we truly haven't. We want to, but sometimes forgiveness can be very hard. The pain is so deep that it becomes a stronghold in our lives. It builds a fortress around anger, resentment, hate, and feelings of vengeance. This can lead to other issues that will affect your mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual health. These negative thoughts have taken root in your life for some of us many years and now you are filled with bitterness and a sense of injustice, which rightly so. But how do we tear down the strongholds of unforgiveness? We start by unmasking it. Unmasking is revealing the true nature, the core, the root of the bitterness you bring where? Into every relationship that you have. The reason why you can't live in the now because you are tied up in the wrong that was done to you. It has stolen your joy. The depression, the anxiety, and the feeling of unworthiness that you feel. And the reasons why you keep losing valuable friendship. When we recognize the root of some of these issues that we face, that is due to the grudges that we carry, there is still work to be done because it will take commitment to change. Your first step would be to, to understand the value of forgiveness and recognize, recognize how it can improve your life. Jesus required it. In Matthew 6, verse 14, this is what he said. He said, for if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly father will also forgive you. We are to forgive so that God can forgive us. Unmasking unforgiveness will reveal the areas where healing is required. 
and the person who needs to be forgiven and for what? Acknowledge your emotions, the anger, the frustration that the anger and the frustration caused by the event that took place. Don't ignore those. Acknowledge them. But after you do that, choose to forgive the person who's offended you. When you release yourself and forgive, you break that stronghold. You release the power and the control that the offending person has over you. When Jesus told Peter to forgive seven times 70, it was not to benefit the offender. It was to benefit the person that was offended. Listen, guys, someone has stolen your childhood, your innocence, your ability to love, ability to trust, or to identify your self-worth. But today, not tomorrow, not next week, today you can take it all back. But that's going to require a mind that is made up to forgive. Release yourself today. Because in Joel 2.25, it says that I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm. Listen, God wants to restore you. He wants to give you back all that the enemy has stolen from you, your joy, your peace of mind, who you are and who you're supposed to be in his kingdom. I encourage you today to get help. Get the help that you need to get to that place of forgiveness. Speak to someone. But while you're doing that, allow God to be the driving force in your life. Why? Because he loves you and he knows the thoughts that he has for you. I'm Alison Cornelius, and thank you for joining me on Mana for Thoughts.